The X-Files originally debuted on September 10th, 1993. And from that day, the X-Files went on to have nine original seasons of the show, two movies, two revival seasons, one spinoff, and a total of 217 episodes. In this video, I will be talking about the series as a whole and if it's still worth watching today. I don't plan on going super in-depth into particular episodes, but I plan on talking about the general story of the show and talk about the parts I liked and disliked throughout the show's run. Spoilers are ahead for everything X-Files, so if you don't want a 30-plus year old show spoiled for you, click off now. The show follows Special Agent Fox Muller and Dana Scully as they uncover cases of the paranormal while they work for the FBI. Of course, the cases they cover are considered X-Files due to their bizarre and usually unsolved nature. This is the basic premise that the show follows for its entire run. Of course, it's interspliced with major storylines along the way, such as Mulder's search to find out what happened to his sister and for proof that aliens are real, and there are, of course, plenty of other major storylines along the way, too. The show can be broken up into four distinct eras, those being the original Vancouver era, which was seasons one through five, the LA era of the show with Mulder and Scully, which was seasons six and seven, the Daga era of the show, which was seasons eight and nine, and finally, the revival era of the show, which was seasons 10 and 11. Every era of the show provided for some great stories and moments. Like most shows, I do think the original run of the show, which I would classify as the Vancouver era, is probably the best stretch of episodes the show has to offer, but in saying that, the other eras do provide for some really good X-Files moments too. This run of the show is when Mulder and Scully thoroughly establish their deep-seated connection with one another through various trials and tribulations. I really don't know if you can find a more loyal partnership slash relationship than Mulder and Scully. The LA era also provided another solid era of X-Files. I actually think season 6 was one of the best seasons the show has to offer, just with a super mediocre finale. But sadly, I do think season 7 was one of the worst seasons the show has to offer, which was very unfortunate because that was the last full season of Mulder before he took a reduced role in the later two seasons. Season 7 just never felt like it really knew what it wanted to be, and it never really got going until the end of the season, which did create for an intriguing story line in season 8. That leads us to the Doggett era of the show. I really didn't know if I would like Mulder being replaced by John Doggett, but I can truthfully say I really enjoyed getting to know that character throughout seasons 8 and 9. Season 8 was a drastic step up from season 7, and it felt like it had a sense of direction and an interesting overarching storyline being told. It also provided us fans with some of the darkest episodes in X-Files history, with hardly any levity that would normally be brought on by Mulder's dry personality. Season 8 was also the introduction of Monica Reyes, who would take the reins with Doggett in season 9 of the show. Reyes is another character I was hesitant about since the show was always so hyper-focused on Mulder and Scully and to a lesser extent Skinner. Luckily Reyes proved to be an interesting character throughout the tail end of season 8 and all of season 9. For me season 9 was probably the most disjointed season of the X-Files. Not because the stories were bad, it was mainly because they didn't know what to do with Scully that season. She was essentially the third will to Reyes and Doggett's duo ship and it truly just felt like the show didn't know what to do with Scully that entire season. As much as I love Scully, the season probably would have been better if it was just Reyes and Doggett going out on cases and solving the mysteries. Then you could have had Mulder and Scully show up at the end of the season to wrap everything up. That leads us into the show's original finale, which was in season 9. The finale was alright. For most of the episode, though, it just reminded me of Seinfeld's finale, though. It was just Mulder on trial the entire time, and they brought back former characters with flashback clips, eerily familiar to Seinfeld's finale yet again. And ultimately, the finale ended with more questions and answers. The show leaves you wondering what's going to happen to Mulder since he's a wanted man. Are him and Scully officially together? What happened to Doggett, Reyes, and Skinner? I can totally get why fans were very frustrated with this finale at the time. This is a perfect time to detour and talk about the movies really quick. The first X-Files movie came out in 1998 and was made to fit between seasons 5 and 6. I thought the movie was really good and it didn't try to do too much, but it did drive the overall plot of the X-Files forward, along with answering some questions and providing some really nice big action set pieces. The same thing cannot be said for the X-Files I Want to Believe, which came out in 2008. It was a very slow burn of a movie and it didn't really propel the overall X-Files story forward. It did do two things decently well though, and that was answering the question of Mulder being a wanted man from the season 9 finale, and it also sends Mulder and Scully off for probably their happiest ending at the end of the movie, where they for all intents and purposes sail into the sunset together. Now let's dig into the revival seasons of the show. Season 10 debuted in 2016, which was 14 years after the original ending of the show. Season 10 was a bit of a reset where the show was solely focused on Mulder and Scully again, and of course with a little bit of Skinner sprinkled in there. I personally thought season 10 was awesome. It was probably the best revival of a show I've ever seen. I was actually stunned how well the show was able to slide back into the X-Files formula and create an awesome season of television. Mulder and Scully didn't miss a beat with this revival and it was refreshing to see how well everything slid back into place as if they hadn't been gone for a number of years. I have no real nitpicks or complaints about season 10. The only thing I can think of was how Reyes was reintroduced back into the show, but that's my one lone gripe with season 10. Season 11 picked up where season 10 left off and provided fans with another really good season of X-Files. Again, I have no real complaints about season 11 either. I just wish we could have seen Doggett return in some way in either season 
season 10 or season 11. The character was just too good and too important in seasons 8 and 9 to not even mention him in the revival of the show. But I guess if that's my one big complaint, they did a pretty darn good job bringing back the show. Seasons 10 and 11 were also filmed in Vancouver again, so the whole feel of the show just fell at home again, and I think that really helped too. I guess I can't talk about season 11 without talking about the ultimate finale for the series. At least as of 2024, you never know, they might bring it back, who's to say? So I think the series finale mirrors a lot of the issues with the season 9 finale. It resolves some things, but it also created a whole new batch of questions that will probably never be answered. The finale leaves you wondering where William will go, is Cigarette Smoking Man really dead for good, did Skinner really kill Reyes, did Skinner himself actually die, and how did Scully get pregnant again? This was all dumped into the last 10 minutes of the finale with no real inkling of resolution. The only thing I'll say that I really liked about the very end, that it was reaffirmed yet again that Mulder and Scully have one another through thick and thin. And no matter what, they'll figure out the mess that they're in, and they're still out there fighting the good fight. This show easily provided sci-fi television with some of its best characters ever to be created. Mulder is one of the best protagonists in sci-fi history through his unrelenting quest for the truth. Scully is easily one of the best female characters ever written in TV history, maybe only rivaled by Buffy Summers, even though they are drastically different characters to say the least. Cigarette Smoking Man is probably one of the most interesting and intriguing villains and anti-heroes I have seen in a show. The show does a great job never overplaying their hand with that character and always shrouding him in mystery. Walter Skinner provides great support for Mulder and Scully throughout the entire show's run, even though he kind of started off as an antagonist, he quickly became one of Mulder and Scully's most trusted confidants. Skinner also saves her hides more times than I can count. The Lone Gunmen do a great job bringing levity and comic relief to the show, even with Byers, Langley, and Frohickey being more eccentric characters. They're never treated like idiots, and they are helpful and down for the cause, no matter the stakes. John Doggett and Monica Reyes are also very well-developed characters over their tenure in X-Files. For being two characters that are very different from Mulder and Scully, they both worked really well with one another in the context of the show, and felt like fully realized characters by the end of their run together in season 9. I like that Doggett was a straight-laced guy with easily understandable morals that were never unwavering, but at the same time would do whatever it takes to protect Monica and Scully. Reyes was also a very interesting character because she kind of had a sixth sense about things, but the show never went over the top with it, which I appreciated. She also proved to be very loyal and understanding to Mulder and Scully's crusade. Wire to Wire X-Files is one of the most consistent shows I've ever watched. It may not have the super high highs that some shows have, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing because the show hardly has any real lows to speak of. This show may have a handful of bad episodes, but even their bad episodes aren't awful compared to some other show's worst episodes. Ultimately, X-Files is a great sci-fi show and I highly recommend watching it if you haven't. It is a very engaging show and makes for an easy watch, even if it will take you some time to get through all 217 episodes. With that said, what are your thoughts on the X-Files? Let me know down in the comment section below, and while you're down there, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. Until next time guys, everyone have a great day, thanks for watching.